Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Ar-Rahmanirrahim Malik yawmiddin Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ به تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته most respected viewers by the grace of Allah and by his permission we are today on the 27th episode. Yes, the 27th episode of our presentation on thematic study of the Quran. Today, we will be addressing a theme that is very important. And this theme is the Quran and science. Why do I say that this theme is very important? It is very important to discuss the Quran and science for a number of reasons. In the first instance, because modern, modern developments in the world and advancements in the world are said to be, and it is quite so, products of science. Technology as it were, modern technology as it were, is the product, is the byproduct of modern science, so to say. And therefore, because of this tremendous and enormous impact that science has made on human life, science is being glorified. One can say that science is being over glorified. In some climes, science is not just being glorified, but is being venerated and worshipped. Some people take science for God because they think if not because of science, how would we have gotten modern medicine? If not because of science, how would we have gotten all the modern technology, including the latest of technologies, the smartphone, and now, you see, we are going beyond the so-called information and communication technology or digital technology as it were. We are going to, I mean, the world is going into disruptive technologies, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, robotics, and whatnot. 
So science is so venerated and so glorified and uh, it is because of this over glorification of science that some people think that after all the world doesn't have a creator of course the subject matter of creation is a subject matter that we took several weeks to address indeed indeed it is because of this over glorification of god of science where science is being even you know taken for a deity that is worshiped is taken for god like i earlier said scientism the worship of science now it is because of this that atheism in a way is spreading like bushfire or wildfire in the world especially among the young the young ones this is the reason why it is important to discuss the quran and science this far my viewers would accept that this particular theme is a very important one again because of another reason it is still important to discuss the quran and science what is that other reason the other reason is the erroneous belief by some people that religion cannot go together with science that religion is something else and science is another thing else and therefore uh you cannot talk about science in relation to religion now it is for this reason also that it is important to discuss quran and science or let me say like betran razal the popular famous british philosopher said in one of his books religion and science he divided you know uh people or views regarding the relationship between religion and science he divided you know the views into about four different views one of the views is that science and religion are parallel science and religion are parallel that is to say that they will not meet there is no meeting point between science and religion religion is this is addressing a different subject matter and science is addressing different subject matter while religion is about spiritual realms you know spiritual world talking about spiritual world and other rituals science is addressing reality that is what they say science is addressing the subject matter of science is about reality facts that can be proven so for this reason there is no way religion and science could meet so they are parallel this is one view but then this is born out of the narrow conception of religion and there are historical explanations to that it is because of the history of science in the west that was responsible for this particular conception of the relationship between religion and science another view is that although it may be the the, the second side of the it may be another side of the same coin together with the first view that has just been explained that religion and science are parallel 
But the second view is that religion are science and science are in conflict, are in conflict. Now these two views are all rooted in the history of, sci of modern science, but particularly in the West. In the West, especially in this regard, I mean in Europe, the experience of scientists in Europe was a very bad one. Scientists as it were, and as is known, whoever read the history of science in the West, scientists were persecuted. Scientists were massacred and killed in some situations because it was thought that Scientists were making heretical pronouncements, pronouncements that were, you know, uh, in disagreement with the Bible. So scientists were excommunicated, declared as apostates, and they were, you know, uh, executed. Some of them were executed because it was thought that scientists were preaching blasphemy. They were propagating blasphemy against God. And therefore, science, modern science, which is a product of, you know, Western Europe. I'm saying modern science because modernity is an epoch in history. There is no time to discuss all these matters. And so therefore, when we say modern science, we are implying that there was science before modernity. There was science before modernity. And that would be proven when we talk about the relationship, the Quran and science. So you, could, you can see it is for this reason that it was believed that science and religion would never agree. In fact, they are in conflict. There is another perspective. That is the third perspective. And this third perspective is the perspective that believes that religion and science are in dialogue. That there, there is the possibility of dialogue between religion and science. And by dialogue, it would mean that we need to you know, identify where there is agreement between science and religion. Now, by talking about dialogue, it means that this particular view or this particular perspective seems to believe or it implies that it believes that there can be a meeting point between science and religion. Or, in an, put in another way, this perspective believes that, you see, there are meeting and parting points. There are meeting and parting points between religion and science. So there is need for dialogue between religion and science where there are arguments, the meeting points need to be identified and the parting points where the two are at odds should also be identified. Now, the fourth strand, the fourth strand is the perspective that believes that there shouldn't be any conflict and uh, if science is factual, it should be in full agreement with the religion. It should be in full agreement with the religion. And this is the angle from which we are going to discuss the Quran and science. That is, that if at all science, a fact is proven and is established to be true, then there is no way it will disagree with the Quran. So this brings us, I mean, presents to us 
a background upon which we will discuss the Quran and science. However, I need to explain further that it was because of this historical experience of the conflict between scientists and the church in the West. There was a conflict between science and Christianity, so to say, the religion. Even when the Western man was talking about religion, he was specifically referring to Christianity. So the conflict between scientists and the church, church as an institution, as a religious institution on one hand, and the scientist. This is what forced the scientists to believe that, I mean, the scientists lumped religion together with superstition and myth. So scientists, out of resistance and overreaction of the scientists, to the, to the persecutions of the church and to the massacre they, they went through by the church, meted out on them by the church. That was why they lumped religion together with myth and with superstition. So on this note, the scientists believe that religion just like superstition, just like myth, is not necessarily based on knowledge. Religion is not just based on knowledge, but, but is anti-knowledge. And therefore, as a reaction, the scientists rejected religion and all that it preaches. And science was therefore based on, purely and squarely based on, the realist philosophy, the realist materialist philosophy that believes that matter is the only real existence. And what is matter for that, for, I mean, for that matter, so to say? And matter in the realist philosophy is anything whose existence can be established by the five senses. And if it goes beyond if it goes beyond the prism of the five senses, that falls within the world of myth and not reality. And therefore, religion and what it preaches falls with, I mean, outside the realm of reality. And therefore, religion is a myth. This is what explains the reason why science, from that particular time, science proceeded on a godless plane on a godless plane, rejecting religion. And since religion is preaching God, science therefore rejected God. Therefore, God, as far as modern science is concerned, God is a myth, is not a reality. I mean, so angels are myth. They are not reality. Jinns are myth. They are not reality. Anything that goes beyond the, the, the you know, that, that cannot be performed by the five senses is not real, it's a myth. Now, this explanation, as we uh, attempt to discuss the Quran and science, is necessary so that we will, uh, it will become clear that. You see, after all, there are certain historical explanations that are responsible for the godlessness of science. That is the fact that science doesn't believe in religion. And it is the reason that explains, you know, certain other theories in science that are also rooted in godlessness, like when you take the theory, I mean, the, the, the Darwin's theory of evolution, like Mendelism and other theories, the theory of natural selection and other things. All these are godless theories, theories that do not believe in God. 
there are reasons behind that. That is to say that if not because of this historical experience, science would have been a believer in God. As we will establish, there were Muslim scientists. Their science was in agreement. I mean, we, we believe in God. But after the historical experience that took place in Europe, science proceeded on a godless plane. And this is why some people think that religion and science are parallel, or others believe that religion and science are in conflict. Now, this far, we have uh, laid a background for our discussion on religion, I mean the Quran and science. Further explanation to this, further explanation to this is the fact that you see science therefore came to be based on pure and exaggerated empiricism. Empiricism. That is, I mean, father, father, you know, epitomized by logical positivism, where explanations of nature and explanations of reality are limited only to explanations of the relationship between cause and effect, cause and effect within the realm of reality, within the realm of this material world. What is it, what that causes this, and what is it, that, uh, what is the effect, and so on and so forth. That is everything situated within the purview of controllables and observables. You control the cause, which in empirical study is called, uh, you see, the, 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 the independent variable. And you examine the effect, that is the observable, that is the dependent variable. This explains the entire, you see, paradigm of the scientific methodology, the scientific methodology. Everything must be explained within realist, you know, uh, explanation. You must be able to observe and see with your eyes or smell it with your nose or test it, feel the test with your tongue or hear its sound with your ears, or, as the case may be, feel it on your body. If at all if I told you can't not establish anything with any of these five senses, then that is a myth, it's not a reality. Scientific methodology is rooted in, on, in this paradigm, is based on this paradigm, and uh, we will come to discuss all these matters as we come to, you know, try to come up with explanations about the relationship between the Quran and science. But at this point, we'll have to put a stop. And uh, inshallah, in the next episode, we will go into the subject matter headlong. We will start discussing, in actual fact, the relationship between Quran and science. At this point, I will say, Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayat wa al-dhikr al-hakim, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa subhanaka Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana, innaka anta al-alimu al-hakim, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.